This was uh, early on this Wednesday morning, and, and what we're seeing from this is that it is uh, somewhat of a departure from what we've been seeing in recent months uh, from North Korea. Now, this is the uh, the eleventh launch, as far as uh, our tally goes, since May that we've seen uh, from Pyongyang. But uh, but we had been seeing uh, different weapons systems. We've been seeing short-range missiles. This is the first time in a few years we've actually seen the uh, the, the the missile uh, being launched from under the water. Uh, a U.S. official saying it was launched from an underwater platform, so not from a, a, a submarine itself. But it shows that North Korea is testing uh, different uh, technology. It shows that it is moving beyond just those short-range missiles, that it knows that the U.S. President Donald Trump uh, doesn't mind. He has said publicly that all countries do it. It does not bother him. So they uh, appear to be pushing uh, the envelope just a little bit further now. And of course, it just comes, uh, Rosemary, uh, and that matter of hours after the U.S. and North Korea had finally agreed to sit down at the negotiating table again. Well, there's a number of reasons uh, that are being touted as, uh, as why North North Korea has done this. For a start, it has done this in the past as well, ahead of uh, negotiations with different countries, uh, laying down uh, certain uh, th certain parameters as to, to what is not on the negotiating table, but potentially uh, some experts looking to the fact that the US president uh, has condoned these, uh, these launches in the past and doesn't seem concerned about them. He said he's concerned about the nuclear tests and the ICBMs, the intercontinental ballistic missiles that could hit main land United States so potentially North Korea feels emboldened to be able to uh, to try a little more technology ahead of those uh, negotiations now there has been a National Security Council meeting here in South Korea they say they are concerned by the launch a stronger response from Japan we heard from the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe saying that this does violate UN uh, resolutions saying that uh, that North Korea is not allowed to use ballistic technology the simple truth is that those are the same issues that the president raised uh, with President Zelensky in their call. Now, the president spoke about lack of European support, he spoke about corruption, uh, and he tasked me to go and to meet with the president of Ukraine and carry our concerns about those issues. And anyone that looks at the president's transcript uh, will see that the president was raising issues that were appropriate, that were of genuine interest to the American people. and. Uh, uh, as more facts come out of this, as people take time to read the transcript of the president's call and reflect on these facts, I think they'll, they'll come to realize this is just more of the same of what we've seen from Democrats for the last two and a half years. One of the main reasons we were elected to Washington, D.C. was to drain the swamp. And uh, I think the American people have a right to know if the vice president of the United States or his family profited from his position as vice president during the last administration. Uh, th that's about looking backwards and, and, and understanding what really happened. I mean, the fact that, that my predecessor had a son who was paid $50,000 a month to be on a Ukrainian board at the time that Vice President Biden was leading the Obama administration's efforts in Ukraine I, I think is worth looking into. And the president made it very clear that he, he believes uh, he believes our, our uh, other nations around the world uh, should look into it as well. We all know, for having covered Pence for so long, that Pence is lying and that he knows that he is because he says that the president was raising issues that were appropriate. Yeah, I do not, right. I do not believe no. that Mike Pence believes the president in his heart of hearts, or even you know just superficially believes that what the president was saying was appropriate. It's hard to imagine a governor Pence, a House yeah. uh, Republican Pence, under any other circumstances, any other president, seeing this exact conversation would say those things that that it's appropriate. But this is the this is the the cross that he bears. This is what he decided that he was gonna, gonna jump in on when he said, Donald Trump, I will be your running yep. mate. He has decided he's going to be loyal, that he, just like Lindsey Graham, he has decided that the Republican party that he has been a part of, you know, his political life, is now the party of Donald Trump. Yep. And he is on that train and he's not getting off. Yeah, uh, Mike Pence wants more than anything else in the world to be president. That's not unique to him. Lots of people who are vice president want to be president, with you know notable exceptions, Dick Cheney, though you could make arguments about that. But uh, he wants to be president, to Dana's point. When he said, you know what, I'm going to sign on with this guy, knowing that, remember, at the time he says yes, even then, yes, Donald Trump is obviously the nominee, but even then, 
There are a lot of voices, Paul Ryan, prominent voices in the Republican Party who are like, do we really want to be associated with this guy? So he takes that gamble. It pays off for him, and he now understands there will not be a thing that I can imagine where Mike Pence says, you know what, I'm going to... I'm going to have to disagree with the president on yeah. that. I, I just, I can't. Not publicly, like. It's not publicly. I can't because he views his fate politically as so wedded, and he's not wrong, so wedded to Donald Trump that there will never be even a scintilla of space between the two of them publicly. Ahí está, la señora Hillary está hablando. Y ahora observen al señor Clinton lo que hace. Al señor Trump. A su espalda. Sí. Observen la cara también, ahora cuando hagan el acercamiento. Los labios, ¿qué le dice sí. Joe? Bueno, lo, lo, lo más significante es la falta de respeto. Para empezar. Para empezar, porque eh, eh, respeto es, es no verbal. De que ella está hablando y él debía haber estado sentado. Pero lo que, lo que más molesta eh, para nosotros que estudiamos esto es que él caminaba atrás de ella como si fuera un predador, un predator. Como, como, sí, 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 como si fuera una pantera, un como león, una, como una un animal pantera. de predador. Ya, ya y le eso lo que, lo que causa es cuando uno, la violación del espacio por atrás casi, eh, causa eh, 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 problemas en, en el sistema límbico del cerebro. Es como cuando tú... Ella siguió hablando como si nada, ella aguantó el tiro ahí. Sí, porque ella es profesional, pero ella, ella ha declarado que se, sentir ese hombre tan aproximado, caminando atrás de ella... ¿Y usted cree que lo hizo a propósito? Oh, seguro que sí. ¿Qué tipo de personalidad es la del presidente de los Estados Unidos? Bueno, yo, como usted sabe, yo escribí un libro, eh, Dangerous Personalities. Personalidades eh, eh, peligrosas. Peligrosa. Y uno de, una de las cosas que se ve claramente, y los de, de profesionales lo han declarado, es, es que él tiene todas las tendencias que se ve en el maligno narcisista. Eso es una personalidad que piensa mucho de uno, mucho... Sobre sí mismo. Sobre sí mismo y muy poco de otros. Eh, tiene un sentido que es especial. O sea, ¿no es empático? ¿No hace empatía con los demás? No, hay, no, no, no hay es, empatía. No es, ¿No es compasivo? No. A teenager is allegedly busted for pretending to be a sheriff's deputy. After, um, the police say that they caught him actually pulling somebody over. The real police in Albuquerque say they saw the 18-year-old parked right behind an SUV and had emergency lights on his own vehicle that he installed himself, reportedly. And he was dressed in plain clothes, but you know what they noticed? A star-shaped badge right there on his belt, making the deputy suspicious. So you work for Burnley Sheriff's? Yes, sir. Well, do you have an idea with you? I mean, this is, this is all I got on me. Like I said, I'm under, I'm under equipped. I was just heading over there to the courthouse. Okay, so 10 minutes into talking with this teenager, police asked, um, what, what's going on, man? Listen to his confession, or what sounds like one. You got this online? It was well, at one point my father's. What's up, man? All right, I'm just gonna be straight up honest with you, okay. I'm not a cop. Uh-oh, the teen even broke down into tears after that and was arrested.